back to the self-made auto channel. I think we're gonna have a quick one here. Uh, I just pulled in this 2000 Toyota 4Runner. It's got the 3.4 in it. Money lights on. It's been coming on and off on this fella uh, with a P0136. So that has a malfunction with the rear O2 sensor. I uh, pulled up some data here. I've got the car running. I'll show you what we have. What's up, Amazon lady? Uh, what do you want? Right here. Come here. Put I'd love to. So I'm just letting it warm up now. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't have a coolant temp up there, but it's still pretty cold. It is in closed loop now. Uh, we can see our air fuel ratio sensor upstream is working. Uh, our lambda is right on the money or close enough. Small fuel trim corrections. However, the rear O2 has not budged a bit. I'm gonna take and shut it off now that I see this. It's been running for a while, I don't know, maybe long enough for the snow to melt, uh, five minutes or so. Uh, that rear O2 sensor should have started showing showing some activity. Now I don't hear any exhaust leaks. Of course, we're gonna have to get under there. Some visual inspection. Uh, then we'll take and unplug it. I don't know if these have a bias voltage on it, but somehow we have to confirm. Uh, well, first we'll confirm that the heater works, the ground, um, and uh, the signal return wire back to the ECM. We'll put a little bit of voltage on it, make sure our data fit here goes up, and call it good. So this is the home of the rear O2. The bolts that hold it on are a little crusty. Uh, so what we're gonna do, not get twisted up in the drive shaft. I left it running because I wanted to see if there was any leaks, which it sounds pretty tight. We're gonna take it unplug it. Looking at the scan data, it is still at zero. That tells me it's unlikely there's bias voltage on that. Um, all right, so let me uh, get my light here somewhere. Let's stick that there. I got some test light. First thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to check the heater, make sure that this O2 heater is turning on. Uh, let me look at my diagram. White with blue should be battery power, and then brown is our ground. So first, I'm going to take our test light. This is our four amper. I'm going to go across those two, make sure we got battery power and ground. And you can see we got a super bright light. So that's a four amp light. So we got battery power and ground. should be our signal, our heater, which is not seeing it. Not seeing any purple on here. Let me double check the diagram. Ah, crap, that's good. The diagram must be wrong. So what we'll do, We'll look at this, where this plugs in. Let me just see which way that plugs in. So the two black wires are gonna be our heater. So it's gonna be white with red, or red with white. So this should blink. So we're gonna go from our heater control. Right. Battery positive. Make sure my test light's good. That's when the test light's good. Come across the heater circuit. Should light up on us. Technically. But it does not. Uh, I'm going to pop back in the scan tool here. I'm going to go to test. Now, I don't know if because this is open circuited or if it senses the wrong resistance, if it shuts that heater circuit down. Uh, the heater is ground side switch. It should be a duty cycle. Uh, let me pop, I'm gonna pop in the special test here. I wanna see if there is a rear O2 heater test. Because being that we unplugged the O2 sensor, uh, you know, that may goof up the computer. 
the sense that it shuts off that heater. I'm not 100% positive on that. We'll find out here momentarily once the scan tool decides to cooperate. Let's see, other test. No, I did not see a rear O2 heater test in there. With that being said, we're gonna pop back into data stream. I'm gonna use the test light. I'm gonna go from battery power to the O2 signal return. Of course, I dropped my test light on the ground and smashed the bulb. So, what we should see here, so this, I shouldn't call it the signal return wire, it's a signal wire. So this is the wire that the ECM is gonna sense the rear O2 voltage on. I'm just gonna send 12 volts through my test light. Now this isn't gonna display 12 volts, but it should go up to its maximum reading. Let me just make sure my test light works here. All right, so I'm in battery positive. This should be the signal wire right here that I'm in. What's it do? Yeah, 1.275. Take my test light out and back to ground. So everything looks good except for the fact we don't see the heater toggling. Which I'm gonna stick my test light in. We're gonna set the car down, shut it off, start it back up. Now I know some of these are kind of sensitive in the sense that they see an open circuit. I'm just curious if it sent an O2 heater code now that it's unplugged. So I just had the PO136 initially. And I'll show you guys real quick on the whiteboard the test that I did there. Yeah, so now, yeah, bank one sensor two heater malfunction. So that's a good thing because like I say, prior it had just the PO136. It obviously has the ability to detect the O2 heater circuit. So in a sense that's good because um, that means that the control wire for that O2 heater is good back to the ECM. So uh, let's take and set this car down on the ground. What's that? Is that all my good stuff? <laughs> huh? You're like little Santa Claus. What's I, this? I don't know. It's Ooh, like a hat. From China Post it says. Oh man, untracked. Uh, and there's other stuff. Sweet. You want me to get the door for you? Yeah. Please. That's some fancy hair you got today. <laughs> I'm liking it. Alright, so I'm gonna shut the truck off. Subscriber channel 67x. I think that's his name. I'm not gonna mention his real name. I want people sneaking up on him. Uh, he must have heard me mention in the Grand Marquis video about how my struggles with the scope on a rope and how one day I want to take the scope on a rope and hook it to a pair of vice grips. And this is what the fella made for me. That is awesome. Right there. Look at that. No more messing with the little chintzy clamp trying to find the good ground. Don't stab me with it, woman. Look at that, that's awesome. Somebody should hurry up and patent that real quick. Cause right there, that's a New York style test light. Cause it gets you through the rust and the crust, lock it on, boom. That's awesome and that thing is wicked sharp. <laughs> it didn't really poke me that was just for- Can I try? No, don't poke me. Let's see what you got there, woman. Christmas presents. Fishing. My kids are like addicted to YouTube. Oh yeah, you warned me about that, right? What? My fingers in between the magnets. Yeah, don't put your fingers in there. I, I got myself a little bit earlier. I was like, oh. So my kids have been watching these YouTube videos. And I, Holy crap, those are strong on magnet fishing. So now they're all obsessed, want to go magnet fishing. So this is oh, okay. bottom these super strength. How far should I turn it? Tight, baby. I don't want to strip it. it feels oh, you ain't got that much. But it doesn't, it feels like it could. Oh, okay, then leave it. So we're locked tight in the eye bolts. And these uh, rare earth magnets from the planet Rare Earth. And then you put a string on it, like a, you know, a couple hundred pound test and wing it out in the water, drag it in and... Get one more. Win a prize, potentially. So, put a little red Loctite on them. What this has to do with the Toyota video. I really don't know. <laughs> so I cleared the codes in the Toyota. 
because uh, it's through the heater code. It may not like the light bulb in line. We might have to use something different. Let's find out. All right, let's try round two. Anything? Nothing. Right, well, I had to go change some tires for a guy. Just for the heck of it, I'm checking on the Altel uh, because for whatever reason, I cannot get that O2 sensor heater circuit to turn on. Uh, I did look up uh, some criteria on it, but it doesn't, it doesn't really tell us as to its strategy when it turns on. I just want to see if um, for some reason here, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. It is California emissions. Um, I mean, I guess the good news is when the lights, you know, if the test light's in place, it does not set a code. As soon as you take that light out, it does. I mean, that tells me the circuitry is good. I would just, for whatever reason, like to see it turn on. But I guess it really doesn't matter at this point. Doesn't appear to be the option on the Alltel either. Well, it is what it is. <clears throat> so I say regardless if we've seen the actual heater circuit turn on, uh, the fact of the matter was, at the point that we were checking this, we should have had some O2 sensor activity, which we had, you know, none. It, would, it never left zero volts. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the rear O2. We know that the power and ground is good. We know that the signal wire is good and, and responsive. I did order a new O2 sensor for us. It just arrived. So I'm going to take get the wire here out of the little clip here if we can. And now we're proposed, well, we have this problem here staring us in the face. So uh, as you can see, there is no threads. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the torch, I'm going to nick this, the nuts off both sides and hopefully not hit any threads because that's our only hope. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. It'll look good or it'll go bad. Maybe somewhere in between. Woo! Sparkly. So if you're trying to do this, with your torch, the trick is don't fill around too long. You get too hot, you just gotta stop, let it cool back down, because otherwise you're gonna transfer too much heat to the stud. Uh, so now I'll go get a pry driver slash chisel, and we'll try to tap them pieces off. chaser over those obviously as you can see. Trying to shake the O2 sensor here. You gotta try to get these out, they can be a real pain. I've got this eight millimeter thread chaser. Hopefully it'll get started. Sound of the crust. 
nasties. gonna be the last time them studs ever get used. So now we gotta see if the gasket stuck to the pipe there. Easiest way to get them off is just heat them up. You just separate that rust bond. way to get off most exhaust gaskets whether you're working on you know flange gaskets or whatever you're working on if you just take a torch and heat them up that way there just separates it right down to you know the original metal without having to try to chisel away at it and all that stuff all right oh well, this sucks so I ordered the Denso some jerkwads already opened the bag and guess what's missing the gasket. Son of a monkey. Sometimes these people that send stuff back to the parts store just piss me off. And it gets worse. That's the number I need. That's the number that was in the box. Not only did some dirt bag steal the gasket, they also swapped parts. So probably bought the more expensive one, the cheaper one, returned the more expensive one. You know the game. So sick of this crap. Long story short, we're not going to have one until late this afternoon, so the truck's just going to have to sit here. We'll come back and finish it. It's going to be no difference to you guys. It's just going to be one second and a little transition. And then we'll pop it in. I kind of want it to drive it, run it through a drive cycle. But that's that. I'd love to know when that heater turns on. That's in the back of my mind turning. So, anyhow, keep motoring. i got to go put a frame in a Mercury Milan right now. What a day. Make sure numbers match here, 234, 41. Hey, look at that, numbers match. Almost quitting time. I ordered us a gasket just in case. Hey, look at this, this one even has the gasket on it. Seems like whenever somebody sends something back to the parts store, I always get that part. I got some new nuts and bolts, washers, no bolts I guess, let's get her put in. My little camera holder is over on the other side. So we're going to have to try to just freehand this one, now that you guys really want to see me put in an oxygen sensor. Hopefully these studs are good enough to still snug up here. I just ended up using just the flat washers. But we should be good. So I'm kind of curious about that heater. I was talking to Keith earlier today and asked him if he knew the uh, theory and operation on it. And he didn't know right offhand. I lost him when I said 2004 runner in New York State. Well, that escalated quickly. It's almost six o'clock now. And a few customers stop in. Uh, I don't know where we left off. O2 sensors in, plugged in, and then I just had to zip tie it back to the bracket because this one did not come with a new uh, little Christmas tree connector on it. So that's where we're at. I got the key on. I want to see. Uh, what I'd like to do is put it in check mode 
Uh, that way it'll run the drive cycle very quickly. And this one thing uh, Keith suggested about checking that O2 heater is to put it in check mode to see if it'll speed up the process as to when it turns um, when it turns that heater on, whatever the theory of it may be. All right, let's see here. So we'll do this, and then we're just going to start it up, see if that rear O2 sensor comes to life, and then take it for a shimmy. You, a lot of times in check mode, the uh, engine light will be flashing very rapidly. Yep. So there we go. So that's good. Um, I'm going to take it fired up here. the camera battery dies awesome <laughs> the way my day is going today uh, at any rate let's see here so we have our rear O2 oops we can see we're running about 0.36 millivolts where before we were at zero I'm gonna take let's see let's see that's a heater monitor I'm gonna take why don't we just take it for a shimmy, make sure this O2 sensor stays working, which, you know, it's only been running for a minute and we could already tell we're in good shape. Let's go for a drive. So I just backed it outside. It's only been a few minutes. And we really don't even need to take a drive because the O2 heater monitor already ran. I don't know if this is perhaps where it does the test. Uh, you know, this is our downstream O2 voltage. Uh, not sure what it what it tests when it does that, you know when it drops it down lean, uh, you know perhaps response time Something like that without looking up the theory and operation. I honestly don't know uh, So the only monitor that hasn't run is the air fuel ratio O2 monitor um, And that's going to be for the upstream so Really no sense in going for a two. Uh, I'm gonna anyways just want to make sure uh, that this works so our downstream uh, if you're not familiar being you know post catalyst we're gonna see a good steady signal out of it. Now it should get on the throttle here. So it should respond to rich and lean conditions, but you know if the converter's working uh, as it should and it's lit off, you know primarily we're gonna see a good steady voltage there around you know 600 millivolts somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's a few miles from the shop. All of the monitors have ran. The rear O2 is working good. Uh, the catalyst looks like it's in good health. Of course, I had no you know, prior issues. But one thing you always have to be mindful of is when the rear O2 is dead, it can't really monitor the converter as it should. Uh, so it's always a good thing to look at and you know, a potential problem that you have to make your customer aware. But you can see all of our monitors are complete there. So we'll go back to the shop, double check it for any kind of you know, pending codes or anything, and ship it. So that's one thing I do like about uh, Toyota's check mode is, you know, when you put it in check mode, it does bypass a lot of the criteria that have to be met to, you know, run the drive cycle and allows you to run them quicker. Uh, one thing you'll see when we get back to the shop is when we go and we, you know, check codes and, you know, stuff like that, we'll check all the rest of the monitors, make sure everything's set. Uh, when you're in check mode and you shut the vehicle off and it exits check mode, it also resets all the uh, monitors. So if you're out trying to do a drive cycle for inspection and you have to shut the car off, well now you're boned because you got to start all over again. So just uh, be mindful of that. And uh, it's a pretty pretty accurate system. Uh, I do like it. Uh, you know, short of being able to force run the monitors, I mean we're only you know two miles from our shop and ran a full drive cycle. Well, I don't know about EVAP yet, but we ran every monitor that we wanted to see. <clears throat> Sorry about the shaky camera. Uh, so we're back at the shop. All those monitors are set. EVAP is still incomplete. O2 good, O2 heater's good. Uh, nah, I don't really care about the EVAP. We never had, we didn't have problems with it prior and the whole drive cycle was done when it came in. So I was more worried about O2, O2 heater and catalyst. So now we can confidently give this back to the customer and we know we fixed it. All right, folks, well, we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, I wish I could explain the O2 heater more and its strategy as to when it turns it on. You know, a lot of things, uh, perhaps it doesn't like the light bulb in line with it. 
Uh, the code setting criteria for it was anything above 2 amps or anything below 0.2 amps, I would throw an O2 heater code, but it didn't really give the theory as to when the O2 heater turns on. The fact of the matter is we didn't have a problem with the O2 heater, I was just trying to demonstrate that, you know, when we get an O2 code, slow response, you know, this one was pretty obvious, you know, stuck at zero volts. You just want, you know, you have four wires, you want to do a quick, you know, quick check with it. Um, so I failed you in that sense, but I, you know, the way my day's going today, I uh, didn't want to invest a whole lot of time in that. You know, I was happy to see that, you know, once it was unplugged it through a heater code, that tells me, you know, the power going through the heater back to the ECM that it could see, you know, prior to grounding it to turn it on was good, has the ability to, you know, see it and set code. So we'll leave it at that, it's getting late. I want to go home and it kind of sucks that the ding dong will return this to the advanced auto switch the boxes it happens all too often and of course you know I don't think the employees check every box that comes in unfortunately but it kind of blows our day up you know you bring it in in the morning whatever time it was before lunch and then you got to wait till almost four o'clock to get the you know the correct part which kind of sucks because I try to stay ahead of the game pre-order parts stuff like that but it doesn't always work out in your favor um, and then I had another Dakota today, I couldn't run the drive cycle on and that frustrated me. And got the frame out of a Mercury Milan over there. Whatever, it'll be here tomorrow, it always is. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys come back tomorrow and if you want to be sure that you do, click that subscribe button and the notification bell. Find us on our socials, which don't include many, and also find us on Patreon uh, if you want to support us and love what we do. We appreciate that. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.